is going on. Okay, guys, bear with me. I'm assuming this is live. Okay. I want to try to watch it on my laptop, so I'm trying to figure out how I can watch it live as well. So hold on one second. I don't know how to do it. I also don't know if you can comment on a live video on YouTube. I'm used to Facebook Live, so <laughs> this is a whole new ball game. I don't know how to, because I have my laptop sitting here and I want to be able to watch it so I can see if you guys, so I can see what you guys are seeing, if that makes any sense at all. But I just don't know how to find it. <gasps> here we go. I think I got it. Okay. Oh, this is just too weird. All right, now the interesting part is I have to sit down in this chair. <laughs> and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. That's not so good. Let's see. guys, I'm sorry. This is just not fun to watch, is it? It's kind of a nightmare. Good Lord. Okay. I can see that there's a delay. Can you hear me? Because I don't hear myself on my... Well, I'm just going to start. This is the first time I've done this, and I can see that that's well, I'm just gonna start. really wobbly. This is the first time I've done this, and I can see that that's really wobbly. All right. I see that the volume's working. Um, I cannot read the comments on my phone. This is not going to work. You know why? Because this thing's falling over. <laughs> this is not... You guys, I'm just... Hold on a minute. Hold on. I may have to start this over because it's just not working. All right, I'm getting out. Bear with me, y'all. This is the first time I've ever done this, as you can tell, and it's just not going as well as I'd hoped. And I would like to zoom in. I don't know if I can zoom in, though. making y'all sick. All right, hopefully this will be better. I wish I could see the comments on my laptop sitting here because then I could talk with y'all. Let's see. Press the Alt key to pause the chat, then point to a message to delete it. Block the user or take other actions. Hopefully I'm not gonna have to block anyone because I don't know how to do that. Let us know how this tool works for you from the options menu. 
at the top right. Got it. Okay. All right, now I can see your comments. Wow. Hey everyone, Angela, Beth, Shannon, To Die House. Oh my gosh, this is cool. Oh, how fun. It's been years since I've tried punching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in action. That's from Cheryl. Hi, Bobby. Julie, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Okay, I think I finally have everything in position. So I'm gonna start. So first, I guess I'll talk to you about the needle that I use. I use the CTR and they have, their original one was a red handle. And as you can see, this is a green handle. I'm gonna try to get my light a little closer. There we go. And if you purchase the CTR, it used to come with this little red, can you see that little red spacer? It used to come with that on there, but the last time I taught a punch needle class, that little piece was not on there, so you have to add that yourself. You don't have to put it on there, but I like my loops on the other side to be very short. Which brings me to another thing to tell you. <laughs> um, when you buy a punch needle pattern, the designer is going to put you need per color. I put a little disclaimer in my patterns because it depends on the length that you are punching. Like if you're using the ultra punch, I say set it on one. If you're using the CTR, I, like I said, I add this little piece of red and that will come when you buy your needle. You'll have to cut it yourself because it comes in kind of a long piece and then you just cut a little chunk of it and put on there. But I like it because I like a shorter nap on the other side and you save a lot of floss too. If you have really long uh, loops on this side, you're gonna use a lot more floss. So what is on my pattern and other designers' patterns? You may need more or you may need less depending on the size loop that you set your needle to, okay? Does that make sense? It might not make sense to you if you've never done punch needle. All right, so I am going to put some floss in my needle. What color am I using? Kudzu, I think, yep. So all of my patterns so far, all of my punch needle patterns are, uh, I use three strands. Yeah, trial and error works best, yeah. I've done live video with um, Facebook before, like when I'm painting, but I've never done a live video where, <laughs> I almost had the whole thing upside down because I had my camera coming in in front of me and then it, I was you know, getting ready to go live and it dawned on me I would be upside down. So then I had to move the tripod behind my chair and then it was falling over. It was a nightmare, but we're going now. Okay, so this is hollow from tip to tip. So you take your threader, it has a loop at the end, and you feed it through the needle part of the punch needle till it comes out the other end And then you put your floss through there, pull it through, turn this end around, and then you're going to go through the hole. There's a little hole in the, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little hole at the end. You're going to stick that through the hole and pull it through. And now I'm ready to punch. 
So I leave a small tail. I have actually pulled it too far and had to re, re um, thread it. That's gonna happen and you're gonna be ticked <laughs> when it happens. But seriously, that's the hardest part about punch needle is, is threading your needle. But it's really not that hard, especially with good lighting. Uh, the other thing that people ask me a lot is how much, how long of a piece of floss do I use? Because if you use Weeks Dye Works or DMC, it's one long continuous five yard skein. I like to use as long, long a piece as I possibly can because I don't want to have to stop and rethread my needle a lot. But if you use Classic Color Works and I think Gentle Arts is also pre-cut. Uh, you'll be, you know, using, you'll be threading a lot more. But when I teach class, I basically say from the tip of your nose and then you pull your arm out side to the side, at least that long. And then you also want to make sure that this is loose that your arm isn't resting on it. I've been doing, I've done that several times. I used to have a cat and she would be laying on my floss and you'll know that some, if, if it's not punching correctly, that's the first thing you check is make sure that it's free, that it's not getting stuck somewhere. Okay, this is a new design I'm working on by the way. This is something I hope to release in January. All right, so I went ahead and what I like to do when I start a punch needle is I like to outline things and then fill in. The background color is always last. So I thought I would do these four flowers first and then I'll probably just do each little scene going around and then do the fill in and then do the border. And I always, <clears throat> excuse me, I always do the border last too because as you're working and this is, gets tighter and tighter and tighter, these lines will probably not be straight anymore because it's just the more floss you put in there, the tighter everything gets. So you'll have to take a straight edge or a triangle is what I use, and you're gonna wanna straighten your border up again and then punch that. Okay, so here we go. When you are punching a new color against something else that you already have punched. You want your, oh, I gotta back up. Your punch needle has a back side, which is flat, and then it has a front side, which has the bevel. Can you see that? Your floss will be coming out the back side of your needle. Now on the CTR, there is this little silver indicator that shows you this is the front of your needle. It's the beveled edge is the front. That you want this facing away from your hand, always, or it's not gonna punch correctly. Okay, I wish I could zoom in. Let me see if I can. God, I hope I don't mess this up if I do that. Let's see if I can zoom, oh, I can. Yay. Okay, that's gonna be, helpful to you. Let me look over at the questions before I start. Sister Lee wants to know what the black thing is. The black thing. <laughs> I don't know what that, I don't know what you mean. The black thing is, are you talking about on my needle? That's that is just another piece of plastic, but that comes on your needle when you get it. I think, hopefully I don't pull these off. Those also can be removed. I think all of them can be removed. Let me look. Well, I can see that they're cut, so I think you can remove them all if you wanted. Basically, that's gonna determine your loop height. See, on the Ultra Punch, which I should have brought one up here, but I didn't. On the Ultra Punch, you have settings on the needle, so you can set it to one, two, I think it goes up to 10. 10 would probably give you a half inch loop on the other side. 
Um, but if you're doing something super huge, that's like a table runner, maybe, I don't even know if you'd want it an inch. Maybe it's a half inch. I don't know, I will go over the Ultra Punch on my next video. Let's do that, let's do a live video with the Ultra Punch. But just for today, we're gonna to talk about the CTR. So basically, like I said, these determine your loop height on the finish side. You're always working from the back when you're doing punch needles. So when you buy a pattern, if there's words on it, they're gonna be backwards. So don't let that freak you out. Okay, so any more questions real quick? The three strand spools from Weeks are wonderful. If you're doing a large area, you don't have to keep threading your needle. Yes, Robin, that's true. I don't have any of the spools just because I'm. this is how I've always done it. And I know maybe they have more colors available in the spools now, but when they first did the spools, they only had you know a handful of colors. And so I... And I don't know how to store those since I already have a floss tree. But yes, correct. In Valdani, I know a lot of people like Valdani because that is wound into a ball, which makes it like just endless. You could just punch until you don't need that color anymore. So that's nice too. Um, I don't use a lot of Valdani just because, uh, well, it's it's you can't get their there or I don't get my orders very quickly with them and I don't know I'm just always in a hurry <laughs> but I've been with weeks since the beginning of my punch needle career which is going to be 15 years this coming 2020 so I just feel kind of a loyalty to them I do use some other threads here and there but okay hi everyone oh in the case What's the black? Oh, the black thing in the case. That's a magnet. So <laughs> if you are using the CTR, this is called the haystack. And it's to store all your thingies. Usually the two colors I'm working on at that time, I will keep the label thingies in here. And then when I'm done, I will store the floss in here just so I don't have to rewind them on these little cards and then this is so that you don't lose your threader because it it's easy to do i mean i'll be teaching punch needle class and someone will drop their threader and it's like 10 ladies are on the ground on their hands and knees with their glasses on and their phones with the light on and then finally we usually find it but anyways if you don't want to use that you could use needle minders i know that's a huge thing with uh, cross stitch, the needle minders and, or you just even have a magnet close to you that you could stick your threader on. All right, let's look at the questions again real quick. Yes, the magnet in my case. Okay, we are ready to go. So as I said, the indicator is this little silver thing on the CTR showing you where your beveled um, part is on your needle and you want that facing away from your hand. So what you do is when you're stitching or you're <laughs> stitching, when you're punching next to a color, you want, they always, uh, most of the directions that you will get with your needle will say that you want to be perpendicular with your fabric, like straight up and down. Well, to me, that's not comfortable. So just long as you're facing away from that, because if I were to go this way, my loops are gonna get intertwined with the loops of that other color on the other side, and you don't want that. So just make sure you're facing, pointing away from that other color. And then you push down until it doesn't go in anymore. When you come out, you just drag it across the fabric. You don't ever lift it up off the weaver's cloth because if you do, you're gonna pull that loop out that you just made. Or if you turn it over and all of your loops are different lengths, you are either lifting it off the fabric or you're going over too far. When I, when I slide it over, I'm just sliding over a tiny bit. I don't, it's hard to explain. And once you get used to doing this, you'll get into a rhythm. 
but I'm not counting threads. I'm just pushing it in and going over a little bit. And you wanna turn, especially when you begin punching, you, as a beginner, you want to turn your hoop or your stretcher bar or whatever you're using to hold your weaver cloth. You want to turn that. You don't wanna turn your needle. Um, and it's funny because I've watched other people do punch needle and you'll find what works for you because I've noticed that not everyone punches the same. I prefer to punch away from myself so that I can see where I'm going. I mean, I don't turn it every single time, but especially when you're doing a big area, I just, I tend to punch away from myself. Oh, girl, I'm trying to think of all the things to tell you. This is when I wish I had really pretty fingernails all manicured and painted. <laughs> this is when we're doing these close-up videos. So, I use these stretcher bars this is, uh, I get it on Amazon, Master 14. And when it comes in, you put them together. Hold on, let me just trim this. So when I'm done, if I, let's say I need to change colors or something, I just pull that up. I hold my, my finger on it so I don't pull that last loop out. And then I trim it flush. I don't like all the little thingies sticking out. Makes me crazy. I have to have it all as neat as possible. So if you go this route, what you're gonna do is these just, they fit in together. And then I use a staple gun and I just put a couple staples in each corner. I usually do it on both sides, but I didn't on this one. Um, and that will hold it perfectly tight. Then I lay my weaver's cloth with my design in the center. And I use a light box. I have a light box so that I can see that I have it centered. And then I just hold it and I put a regular stapler, staple there, pull that, put a staple here. So I put all four, so you can't see me because I zoomed in. Hold on. So I'll put a staple there, staple there, and then I put a staple here, pull this, put a staple there. Then I go and I just, I pull and put a staple and keep pulling so that my line is straight. And then I look at all the staples in this thing. But I use these over and over and over again. And there's, it's just a super cheap way to do it because I'm, like I said in my video, I think I said that in my video yesterday, I'm a monogamous puncher. I have been since I started doing punch needle. However, I'm about to change that up because I want to have, because I'm doing bigger projects too. So I'd like to have a few going at a time. So I have several of these and love my 14, but I just today ordered some so that I could do a, I think a 16 by 18 because the angel that I'm going to do, I want that one. And Halloween March I'm gonna do. I want that to be really large. Um, the other thing was that I wanted to mention is Lynn Matthew or Liz, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Liz. Liz Matthews, she has a floss tube channel now, and it's Kathy Barracks. Kathy Barracks. Did I say that right? Daughter. <laughs> I'm get, I get everyone's name all mixed up. She, uh, her mom is doing a huge punch needle and it's gorgeous. And I asked Liz what she uses to hold such a big punch needle. And she uses, uh, it's called, it's basically what they use for rug hooking. 
It's got like grippers on it. And she, she said that the loops don't get pulled out because that was my concern is that if you are laying this finished side on the, the uh, grippers, that when you took it off to move it again, it would pull the loops out, but she said it does not. I've not tried that yet. That is something I'm gonna try so that I can let you know, but I mean, hey, if it's good enough for Kathy Barrick, it's good enough for us, right? Okay, I hope I said the right name. Anybody out there? <laughs> Yay, I love it. You may, you've made me want to punch. I really want to try this. I love it. I love it. I, I have a knot here in my floss. And it will probably, I probably end up just cutting it because I can hardly ever get them out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Any other questions? I'm trying to think of things as I go. I do have a punch needle tutorial that covers like everything in depth. And then I think it's like $37 and then you get several free downloadable PDF patterns. Yay, I got that knot out. Uh, which offsets the cost. I mean, basically, if you use all those patterns, it ends up being free. So, see, I'm punching towards myself now. Here's another thing with variegated thread. If I punch back and forth, I might get stripes. So if I don't want stripes in my leaves, and I want more of a circular pattern, then you wanna go in a circle. So all of these have been done in a circle. I'm just gonna to continue to do this in lines and I wanna turn it over and see if we can tell the difference. Make sure I'm still in the shot. Can you see what I'm doing here? I don't know if you can see. I could zoom in even more. Let's try it. Oh my Lord. You're gonna see the hairs on my knuckles for crying out sideways. Okay. My stitch is always too far apart, I think. They look sloppy. I think it's cool you shouted Liz on your floss too. She was thrilled. Uh -huh. Okay. I thought it was kind of ironic that somebody asked me the question if they, you know, if they would, if it would be okay if they started a punch needle floss tube channel. I mean, does it have to be just cross stitch, you know? And then right after she asked me that and I did a floss tube, asking that question to all of you, right after that, I found Liz Matthews floss tube channel. And I'm like, well, she's just doing punch needles. So I thought it was kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna flip this over and see if we can tell a difference. This, this variegated um, thread isn't like super variegated, so you might not be able to tell a difference. Not really. These, I mean, you can a tiny bit, but if you had a really variegated thread, it would basically be striped. And I, I prefer to a circular pattern as opposed to striped. But then again, like for instance, if I'm doing this barn and I have a variegated floss, I would wanna go up and down because I'd want it to look more like the wood. So it just depends. If it's an organic shape, I would go around and around. But if it's like wood grain or something like that, I would go straight. Like this, I'll probably, this is, you know, the ground. So I'll probably go back and forth and try to create stripes on that. On the roof, I would do stripes, the houses and stuff, so. Okay, let's see if there's any questions. I have a gripper frame. I love how tight it holds the piece, but it's very sharp and irritates my arm after a while. Yes, Mary Beth. I used to do I used to make punched rugs and 
I have a huge frame for making rugs and it has the grippers on it. And yes, I would be just raw right here because my arms would be on it, you know, rubbing on that gripper. However, I know you can get these or make them, but I'm not a person that sews, but you can make things that go over that to protect your arms. So I'm sure you can find that somewhere, probably somewhere on Etsy. You can find pretty much everything on Etsy, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna do another leaf here. If you happen to catch my last floss tube video, I gave you 10 reasons that you should do punch needle. And I screwed up the end that was supposed to be funny. And it actually probably made it more funny because I did screw it up. It doesn't look like the video is very good quality. Can you guys see, see what I'm doing very well? Because I'm looking at my, I have all these little red, what do you call them, orts all over the place and I'm not even using red. Oh, you know why? Because they were in my little haystack over here. But yeah, I'm watching this on my laptop so I can read your comments and it looks really grainy. So I don't know if I'm ha if I have a bad internet connection or what. Does it look good to you? The process for removing the cloth from the staples is very violent. <laughs> um, hold on one second. Hi, Sharon, Patty, Valerie, Valerie's here. Is it going to be recorded? I missed the first 20 minutes. Valerie, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can save this and post it as one of my floss tube videos, but I don't know. I've never done this before. So the process for moving the cloth from the staples, all I do is just pull them out. I've never ripped Hold on, see, I forget that I zoom in and then I'm showing you something and you can't even see it. Hold on, I'm trying to zoom back out. Zoom out a little bit. So just all I do is pull. Here, I'll show you one. I'll take, I'm trying to find a spot that has a bunch so I don't. So I just take it and go like that. And then I use little um, needle nose pliers and pull them out, but you may think, oh my gosh, I don't want to tear my weaver's cloth. I have never torn it before, and I've done it. I've been using these stretcher bars for years now. So, I mean, I wouldn't just sit here and just rip the whole thing out. I usually just kind of hold it and go one by one. Some of them will stay in there, and then I just, you know, like I said, use some little pliers and pull them out. You can see fine. Okay, good. Video is good, but what you're punching on isn't always visible. I know, I'm sorry, because I forget that I zoom in. And then, okay, looks fine on the iPad. Can you zoom back out a little? I think your quality is great. This is definitely making me want to learn punch. Yay, this is, this is so exciting. I'm gonna make y'all punchers. Thank you everyone, by the way, for being here. How many, does it show me how many people are on? 20, no, oh, 70 something? 74 people are watching. You know, that's interesting because I've went live on Facebook before and I mean, if I have 10 people, I'm lucky. So I don't know if it's because of the time of the, the day or if YouTube just tends to get more people. I don't know, that's interesting. But then again, when I did live video on floss or on um, Facebook, I was painting. I wasn't doing something, you know, like this, the, a craft that maybe you want to learn. So maybe that's why. Okay. So I'm going to punch some more, but I want you to tell me if you need me to zoom in so you can see better. Oh, 
Did I put the wrong color in? No. I know, look at, look at just, I'm so professional. I just had this big wad. <laughs> so if you, another thing is if you are finding that on the other side, you don't have consistent loops or if they're pulling back through, it's because you may be scooching over too far when you pull this out and slide it. If you go too far, you're going to either pull that loop out on the other side or it's going to be shorter than all the rest, okay? Oh, I just thought of something really good to tell you and I forgot. What the heck was it? What was it? Some things that I want to experiment with is punching on other something other than weaver's cloth. Weaver's cloth is a polyester cotton blend and it is perfect for punch needle. And so I always thought, well, you know, why do anything different if this is, you know, what works best? But um, people do ask me often if you can punch on other types of fabrics and I don't know because I've not tried it. So that's some experimental things I want to do. What else? As you're punching along and when you turn it over, if you see that there is weaver's cloth showing through, hold on, let me just finish that up and then I'll show you. I think I did have the wrong color on that leaf. It's the darker color. Okay, so see, I'm I'm uh I make mistakes too, y'all. Then again, it's nature, so a couple darker leaves will be no problem. I mean, but if I wanted to take that out, all I do is rip it out. Should I rip it out? Do you want to see me rip it out? All right, hold on. How do you get little details to look right? Mine seem fuzzy and it frustrates me. Well, if you are new to punch needle, I would pick a design that was not this intense. I would pick a small design that didn't have a lot of little things in it. Um, if, I, if I can save this video to YouTube, I'll make it in the description box. I will recommend some patterns that are more simple for beginners. This is per, this is large and has some small details, so I would not recommend this for a beginner. But a lot of it has to do with just practice. Another thing you can do is this. If you are doing like a mouth on a person or um, these little bees, for instance, you could just do two um, threads instead of three to do the black part and the yellow part and even the wings for that matter. Do you find some weaver's cloth is denser and harder to punch on? I always use Springs Creative. That's, that's the... Uh, weaver's cloth I have always gotten. I have never tried any other weaver's cloth, so I don't know. Another. I love it. <laughs> Cheryl's going to pull her punch needle out another rabbit hole, she said. I love it. Yes. All right, you are cracking me up. You are going to rip it out, aren't you? You want me to rip it out? I can rip it out. It's not a big deal. Back in the 80s, the fabric was thinner than the weaver's cloth. Oh, that's interesting. You can save it to your channel and it will remain evermore. Okay, cool. Thank you. P please show the pretty side again. 
Let me move my light up a little bit. I'm thinking that might help. Can you see it? So yeah, that's your finished side. And you can see that my, my uh, loops are very short, but I like it that way. Oh, what I started to say is if you turn your design over and you see the weaver's cloth showing through, all you have to do is find it on the other side, which always freaks me out because it's opposite. So I usually put my fingernail there and I'll flip it over so I can see where I might need to fill in. And then all you do is just punch, you know, three or four punches in there and it fills it right in. So. That's what's that's so forgiving. I'm telling you guys, it's so forgiving. All right, are you watching? Because I am going to rip this out just so that you can see it. Why do I like CTR needle opposed to the Ultra Punch needle? That is a good question. Um, I like the way it punches better. I, you know, however, the Ultra Punch is being manufactured by the old tighter flag now. And, you know, maybe... Maybe the manufacturing is, you know, a little bit better now. I don't know. But I find that the CTR goes through the fabric like butter. It is, um, it just, to me, it's a, a better quality uh, needle at, at the tip part. It doesn't catch. Sometimes I noticed with the Ultra Punch, when I went in and pulled it back out, it would catch and I'd have to pull to get it off the weaver's cloth. And then when I did, I'd pull my loop out that I just made. Now, like I said, the, they have, you know, it has been changed who makes the ultra punch now. So it may not be an issue now. Uh, I don't know, that's just, once I started using this needle and I'll tell you, Kristen, I'm not sure how to say her last name, Debase, Debias. Kristen, I met her at uh, the, Na or not the Nashville, um, the National Needle Arts Association. I used to do their shows and I'm my booth happened to be by Norden, Norden Crafts when they were in business. And Kristen, the inventor of this needle was there and so she gave me one of her needles and she said, I want you to try this and tell me what you think. And once I used it, I just haven't went back to the Ultra Punch. But having said that, the Ultra Punch is the most popular punch needle out there. Also, when I teach class, it seems like everyone wants to use the needle that I'm using. However, I always bring extra of each needle with me because some people try the CTR and they don't like it. Some people try the Ultra Punch and they don't like it. So when I teach a class, I always let them exchange it. If they're struggling with the needle, I always say, okay, well, why don't you try this needle and see how it goes? And sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of what works for one person might not work for another. Just like with cross stitch, some people like 40 counts, some people like Ada, you know, it's just whatever your preference is. So that's the one thing that's nice about taking a class. If you have that luxury somewhere near you is that you can test out the different needles without purchasing them. However, if you purchase them from me and you don't like the needle, I would refund your money and you could send it back. So just something to consider. Okay. Oh, that's right. I was going to rip that out, wasn't I? All right. So I want to show you how you do that. I can't believe y'all making me frog. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So since I trimmed that short, I'm just going to stick my scissors down in there and get a hold of one of those loops. All right. Sometimes they get a little bit tangled. See, now I'm pulling out the wrong part. So if I'm ripping them out and it's stuck, I just trim it and then 
because sometimes they get tangled on the other side and it won't pull out easily. Well, okay, of course it's gonna do this on live video, right? There you go. Oh, there's a little bit more. I'm not going about that little tiny piece. Well, I might as well do it all. There it goes. All right, now, if you can see all those little holes, just take your finger and you can go like this, and it kind of gets all the fibers spread back out and you can just punch right over it. Okay, that's all you gotta do. Now, I will say this, and you can, if you use a long piece and when you, if you do frog it, if you have long enough pieces, you can reuse them. But I think I had some, I had to cut it quite a bit, so. Okay, I do have one piece that I can reuse. So I'll reuse that one. But like this short piece, you can't use again. Oh, I started to say something and I lost it. What the heck was it? Oh, if you repunch that and then have to frog it again, I'd move on somewhere else for a while because if I have heard of this happening, it's never happened to me because I've never had to frog an area more than once. But I have heard that you can actually tear the fabric, the weaver's cloth. If you constantly are punching over the same spot several times, it can tear it. But again, I've been doing this for, what did I say? 15 years. <laughs> I've never tore my fabric, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. So now I'm going to get the right color and keep going. All right, let's look. How long does it take to punch a design like the one you're currently working on? That's a good question. I have, this actually will be the largest one I've ever made. And I've never like um, wrote down my hours of how long it takes. I should do that on this one just so that I could even put that on the pattern you know, that this took me approximately this many hours to punch just to give people an idea. But everyone's different. I mean, you know, if you have a little kid, you're going to have more interruptions. Um, for me, I usually sit down and punch either first thing in the morning or I like to do it right before bed too because it relaxes me and I can have the TV on. But a smaller piece, I can get done in a day if, if I'm just, you know, working on it diligently for a few hours. But this piece will take me a while. Okay, what else do we have? Do you sell the CTR needle in your shop? Yes, I do. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You're the best, you know that, right? That's so sweet, thank you. Which way is the concave part of your needle facing when you punch? Miss the beginning if you've already covered this. Okay, so the beveled edge is always paint pointing away from your hand, okay? So there's the back side, which is the flat side, and then the beveled edge is pointing away from your hand. And on the CTR, there's a silver indicator. So that as you're punching along, you can see this and you know that you're holding your needle correctly. Because I know, you know when you write with a pencil, a lot of times you, you move, you twirl the pencil or pen if you're writing. You don't want to do that with your punch needle because you will end up tearing or, you know, ripping your floss and you'll have all kinds of problems. All right, let me look at the questions some more. Can we get the CTR needle in your shop? Yes. Um, yay, 
I'm a little late. I want to learn to punch needle. Talk more about how you like your loops short. Do you ever make some loops longer to emphasize the detail? Also, how about a punched finishing video? Yes, I can do all of that. Um, I've not ever punched using different heights to, to emphasize something. I don't know. I guess because to me, these, when I first saw Punch Needle, it was actually at Quilt Market, which sounds bizarre, doesn't it? And at the time, my friend and I were taking, I think this was, I love hooked rugs here, let's just put it that way. I'm not sure at that time if my friend Jan and I were taking a hooked rug class at this lady's house or not. But anyway, I was into hooked rugs. I love them, but I had, you know, I was just learning how to do them or I was, it was just before I was learning how to do them. So when I walked by the booth and saw Punch Needle, I thought instantly, oh my gosh, these are like miniature hooked rugs. So I have it in my head that they are miniature hooked rugs and it's probably why I don't venture out too much on, you know, punching with different heights and that type of thing. But I want to do some 3D pieces, you know, where you like do a snowman and, and actually sew a backing on him and have him put some weight in the bottom and have him so he can stand, maybe put some twigs in for the arms. I want to do that. I'm trying to ranch out a little bit, you guys. Um, so, you know, it might be cool to do his buttons or his nose on a, you know, make the loops a little bit longer so that it sticks out and gives it more dimension. But no, I have not done that yet. All right. So, and my threader is just, I don't know if you can even see it, but it's all bent to heck, but it works perfectly. And I use my threaders until they break, which doesn't happen very often or until I lose it. And it's funny because one time I dropped a threader and I mean, I never found it. It fell into the couch. I looked all over. I don't know what the heck happened. Thanks everyone for hanging in there with me. I do plan on saving this video so that we'll be helpful to everyone that's coming on a little later. Have you ever had a student with a slight handshake? Do you have a workaround for this? I've not had any students that had that. Um, oh, I know what I was gonna tell you a long time ago and this might help answer that question. When I'm punching, I rest my hand on my stretcher bar, you know, on my work. That gives me stability. Because if you're trying to punch and not rest your hand on anything, you're gonna have no control at all when you pull that out of the weaver's cloth to move it over. So I'm resting my hand on the stretcher bar. And I'm mostly, I, as you notice, my hand kind of rocks back and forth. I'm pulling it out, sliding it over, punching it in. My hand really never lifts off the weaver's cloth. That's an important tip. Can't believe I didn't think to say that earlier. I'm a little distracted. I'm not used to punching and reading your questions and stuff, so bear with me. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing here. So I'm actually punching over what I just frogged. So as you can see, it's working perfectly fine. This is actually really fun because I feel like I'm teaching a class, but I didn't have to go anywhere.
Somebody mentioned um, that it goes fast. Yes, it does. Because again, you are, I, I always refer to us punchers as like human sewing machines. I mean, we're not sewing something together, but you are the needle going up and down and getting that thread into the material. So when I'm done, I just put my finger on there. Isn't that lovely? Oops. Athena, come here. How long? Athena! Are your threads when you how long are your threads when you thread oh I like to have I like to have um, I pull the, th the thread from like my nose to the end of my my arm that's what I teach my students but I like it even longer than that because I don't want to have to thread a lot I don't have to thread my needle a lot that way You're welcome. What, babe? Oh. <laughs> my husband got home from work. So, did you watch my last video when I was talking about my husband coming home from work with his work partner and walking in the house and the way my house is laid out? Like, if you walk through the front door and you're anywhere in the house other than the bathrooms or the bedrooms, the person that walks in is going to see you. Okay. <laughs> and he just walked in. Anyways, you'll have to go watch my last video because I'm not going to repeat it again because I almost edited part of that out because I was thinking maybe I gave you too much information. But <laughs> but again, it's only 2 o'clock. Normally he gets home at 4. So I'm thinking, oh, 1 o'clock will be a great time to go live. And then like... Five minutes before I was going to start, my son stops by and then my husband gets home from work early and it's like, there is there really any good time to go live? That's so funny. Okay, back to it. Oh, Doreen, that's a great idea. She said, on my ultra punch threader, I have a neon color round sticker on the end makes it much easier to find. Yeah, the um, the Ultra Punch has is, is a much longer needle, so the threader is also much longer, and it has a piece of like tape on the end. Oh. You're welcome. Thank you guys all. Thank you for being here. This is awesome. Is this just sitting in my lap? Yes. Looks like you could stab yourself. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. it does look like I could stab myself, which I really could, but I know I've done this for so long that it's not an issue. I mean, you can see how my legs are. So I make sure I'm either punching where I'm not gonna stab myself or I just lift it slightly. I just lift one end just to make sure. All right, let me look at the questions again. Stitching with my bestie. Not TMI, I loved hearing real life. <laughs> My dog is now barking at your dog. <laughs> That's so funny. Sorry about that. Oh my gosh, you guys are killing me. Um, okay, I think I caught up to all the comments. <laughs> okay. You know what? And I could have, well, actually it would have, wouldn't have been any different. I so say I could have done this down at the studio, but I keep thinking any day they're going to start working on a roof. I'm getting a new roof put on the studio because, I mean, it looks bad and it, I'm so afraid it's going to start leaking. But they haven't started on it yet. So I was about to say, oh, I should have done this down at the studio, but my son is when he stopped by earlier 
it's because he, <laughs> you, I'm sure you all can relate to this. He came in and started a load of laundry because he doesn't live, live here. Both the boys are um, out on their own. Uh, but he started some laundry and he's actually down at the studio. On the other side of the studio where I call it the warehouse side of the studio. And he is moving everything to the center of the warehouse side of the studio so that the guys that we're hiring can put the drywall insulation and drywall up. Guys, I you have no idea how excited I am to get the warehouse side of the studio ready to, to move in and have my pattern business over there. I'm stoked because I can't keep a lot of inventory with my patterns because I have nowhere to put it. And it's just, it's a hot mess. And I have a video of the before and I'm gonna do a video of the after so that you can see the hot mess that it is and then you can see the new, more organized studio. But the, the warehouse side of the studio, it was just such wasted space. We were storing things from when we had primitive folk. How many years ago was that? Well, we've been here 18 years. So probably 19 years ago. I had, you know, prints over there. I still have frames. I am keeping some of the frames because I would like to offer them for sale at a very reasonable price on my Etsy shop for uh, y'all. But, uh, I mean, we had a gift shop at one time and I had old like candles. I mean, things that just were no good anymore. So we purged and now we're gonna have someone come in and put the insulation and drywall up and then I will paint it and move the pattern business over there. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait because when I stuff patterns, I'm usually up here at the house. Uh, we're gonna make it so that it's comfortable down there. Like I want to, I want comfortable chairs. I'm gonna have a TV. <laughs> I'm gonna have a TV down there. I used to have a TV in my studio, but I found it to be way too distracting. Uh, but a, a TV on the other side of the studio will be great because when you're stuffing patterns you can definitely watch TV. It's kind of like doing punch needle. You know, it's kind of brainless. You know, you're just putting papers together and putting them in a bag. And once you get that done, you rubber band them and you file them. You know what I mean? So uh, it will get all of this out of my house. In my basement right now, I have two printers. I have uh, probably five or six eight-foot tables set up for my pattern business because we do all the printing of the instructions up here at the house. It's just, it's a hot mess. Like half of the stuff's up here, the large format printer that does the color covers, that's down at the studio. So we're constantly back and forth and I'm just, I'm over it. So I can't wait to get that done. And that part of the studio won't be as nice as my art side of the studio because it won't have nice wood floors and all that because it's gonna be, you know, more of a work area, if that makes any sense. Not that my other part isn't a work area, but I mean, the other side, my, my studio part of the studio is finished like a house for crying out loud. It's, you know, it's got wood trim, it's got a beautiful wood floor, it's got a full kitchen. Well, not a full kitchen, because it doesn't have a large fridge. It just has one of those like small apartment fridges in it, but it has like, you know, a bathroom, everything. Where the pattern side of the studio is just gonna be cement floors with some nice, comfortable, cushiony floor mats and, you know, just things like that, so. All right.
Let's see, any more questions? I've had left-handed students, yes. Uh, it, it's the same. Basically, you're gonna do the same techniques. You, you mean, long as your needle is facing, you know, the indicator and the beveled edge is facing away from your hand, you sh it's all the same rules apply. What keeps the loops as they are? If something would snag a finished piece, would the loops pull out? Well, as you are punching, it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. So like right now, this is vulnerable because if you snag that, it's coming out easily. But as you get this piece done, I've never had it snag and pull out because it gets so tight in there. Like right now, there's a tiny bit of give, but this, when I'm done, this is gonna be like a rock because <laughs> there's gonna be so much floss in there and pulling it tight. Oh my gosh, my dog just heard a car door shut. I really didn't know how long, Jeez. I didn't know how long to do this video, but I have a feeling we're gonna stop now. So I might do this again and do it at night. Athena and do it at night when people are like home from work and stuff. I can totally relate to the way. <laughs> Thank you, Daisy. She said, I can totally rate, relate the way you dye your hair out loud. Does the needle get dull in every place? I've never had my needle get dull. I don't know if you can still hear me. So anyways, this is the last question and I'm gonna go because I've never had one of my needles get dull. Um, so anyway, thanks everyone for being here. I will do this again. Like I said, at night maybe so that people that are working, oh gosh, this thing's spinning. So maybe it's, I don't know if I lost connection or what. But anyway, thank you again for being here and we'll see you next time. Bye. I don't even know how to stop this thing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to stop it. I don't know, am I still filming? I don't know how to stop. I'll just post it. Can you guys still hear me? Oh my gosh, it's still filming. I don't know how to stop it. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. I might as well look at that while we're still filming, while I figure this out. Does anybody know how to stop these videos? <laughs>